Hey, what's going on guys? Stonewall and Doggo here with Raised by Sharks. Today to bring you a great sword tutorial. We're going to start here with the basic controls in the training area, but if you already know the basic controls and new combinations, you can go ahead and just skip to the gameplay where I show you how to effectively use it and what targets you should be prioritizing. So we're going to we're going to start off over here on this big stump with an overhead slash. Now you could just do a regular slash. <coughs> Or you can do a slap after that. You can do the slash into another charged hit, like this. Or after you do the slash, if you hold forward and hit triangle, you go into a different charge attack. Now from there, you can release forward and go into the regular slap and start over. <coughs> or you can hold forward to go to the next strong charge attack. Now if you hold forward a third time, you do what's called the true greatsword charge slash, and it deals the most damage of the game. The only issue with the true greatsword charge slash is that it takes a long time to pull off. You usually need them to be trapped or paralyzed or something to pull it off because you have to go through three charges. But there's a trick to that. If you use the overhead charge, like this, and you go into the second one, you can quickly hit circle to do a shoulder charge and immediately go into the next one. Like this. See, that shaved off a lot of time. Now, if you hit circle, you go into a wide slash. If you keep hitting circle, you go into a combo like that. It's decently powerful. It's good for quick openings when you don't have much going on. Now, if you hit triangle and circle at the same time, you do the overhead slash, like that. One more time. Overhead slash. Moderately powerful, and it's good for hitting high up targets, because as you can see, the swing goes up pretty high. Very good for hitting tails, like if you're fighting a Rathalus or a Ravian, you can quickly hit the tail for the carve. Now, right trigger is for guard. This can also this year be done straight up from sheath position. The most used technique that I've seen online for greatsword is to just constantly charge your attack, resheath it, reposition, charge again unless you have a long opening like I said where if you have a trap or a paralyzed monster. I personally prefer to go for the charge like this. Slap. Well, I didn't slap there, but you know what I mean. The, the slap. Like that. Then roll away. Because you get a little bit more damage out, and honestly, it's so quick that if you were going to get hit for doing the slap, you were probably going to get hit for just sheathing anyway. So there were a few attacks I couldn't really explain to you too well in the Devourer, training room, so I'm going to show it to you here. The great has yellow when you green land, you can do this by hitting circle. So you hole. jump off a tall you height and do your little aerial attack with triangle, same as any out. other weapon. Although you have to be sprinting to do it. And when you land it, you can hit circle like this. It's a very, very powerful move, almost as strong as a charge. Sometimes it can be more if you hit the right spot. But, as you can see from me showing it to you here, it leaves you very, very open, and unlike most attacks, you can't really dodge roll for a little bit. That was the earliest you could dodge roll, so as you can see, it leaves you open for a good long while. Whereas, if you look from a regular greatsword charge, you can dodge almost immediately. <coughs> you get a regular overhead and a slap, you can dodge pretty much immediately. There's another uh, charge attack for the greatsword using the circle. I don't think it's that great because it's another one that leaves you pretty wide open like that. But I'm going to use the Great Jagras here to teach you some basics for how to use the Greatsword effectively. So, when you're using the Greatsword, you have to look at who is in your team. If you have a Hammer user, a Hunting Horn user, and a Gunner, well, 
who's gonna cut the tail? Well, that'd be you, because you're the great sword user. Great sword is great for cutting tails. I know Jagras, Jagras can't have its tail cut, but basically with great sword, your priority for tail cutting is very high. The only time you would be tail cutting with great sword is if you see yourself in a team with, let's say, like a long sword a dual blade user, a gunner that's effectively using a slight shot, and there's there's no hammer. So you'd be the one hitting the head. Because I would say one great sword's highest priorities is the tail. And there's just a video of me using it on the tail, even though his tail can't be cut. After making sure that there's someone on the tail of the monster, and if there isn't someone above you on the back of the water, that's you. Then you check to make sure that there's someone on the head. If there is no one whose job it is to hit the head, that becomes your job. Because Great Sword can deal slash damage to it, but it can also use the slap. I try to make it here to show you. So that's the slash damage. That is slash damage and, uh, and impact damage are two different types in the game. Great Sword can use the slap like this to do impact damage, which is good because impact damage can stun the monster like that. Well, I missed that one, but it can stun the monster if you hit it enough. Generally, I like to work with hammer users because if I'm effectively slapping the monster in the face enough during the hunt and hitting the tail enough during the hunt <coughs> to go along the, along the rest of the team, I'm making sure the tail is getting cut, I'm making sure the head is taking enough damage to break the head parts and stun the monster more easily with the hammer user so that way we can get in some extra hits when he goes down. Other than that, it's really up to personal preference. I will say one thing, this move I'm about to use right here, the uppercut, that attack right there, I'll do it again one more time to show you, the uppercut like that deals a solid amount of damage, but if you have teammates nearby and they get hit by that, they'll get sent flying. Once you're really good with the great sword, you can angle with yourself. You'll probably still piss them off online, but you can angle yourself to properly line up a aerial attack for a mounting attempt. Again, people online, if you don't know them, will probably start to get aggravated if you launch them enough. And there's a true great sword charge, by the way. Holding forward and trying did 218 damage. You can see it's very, very powerful. One of probably the strongest sealed hit attacks in the entire game. And I used it because I had Jagger's incapacitated, and he was also moving a little slow because he was depleted on stat. Um, but yeah, so back to the upward sweep attack. It will launch enemy uh, teammates. You can use it effectively for toll monsters like Rathalys or something like that, a Diablos to hit their tail a lot, right, a lot more than most other attacks Congrats. will allow you to hit, but you might also send some teammates flying. It's pretty funny in my opinion. Alright, well, that's it for the basics for Greatsword. I mean, it's going to take a lot of practice because it's a slow moving weapon. It takes a lot of time to get used to it with the skill, but once you master it, it's an incredible weapon, very fun to use. I'll probably come back with another video on the advanced mechanics to Greatsword, depending upon how this video fares, but good luck to you using Greatsword going forward, guys. Thank you for watching.